In this video, we're going over Korean four-point needle technique. And to get there, we're going to be reviewing some fundamentals like five-phase theory, including the Sheng and Ke cycles, five-shoe transport points and their correspondences to the five phases, and some of the basic concepts around tonification and sedation. And hopefully, when we put these ingredients together, that will help us understand why this four-point needle technique works, rather than just memorizing a huge list of point combinations. And this video is brought to you by students like you. So to everyone who supports the channel and the website, thank you. So what is four-point needle technique and when do you use it? Well, basically, this is a needle technique that uses four points. And we use it in situations where we have a channel that's afflicted and we're diagnosing it as either excess or deficient. So this would be for things like spleen deficiency, gallbladder excess, kidney deficiency. This is not for complex zongfu patterns like spleen chi deficiency with excess damp and liver overacting, or kidney and heart not communicating with deficiency heat. This is just for a channel and it's either excess or deficient. So four point needle technique gives us an elegant way to tonify the spleen or drain the gallbladder or tonify the kidney and so on. So to understand how this works, we're going to need to review some fundamentals, starting with the five elements or the five phases. So way back in the very beginning of Chinese medicine school, we learned about the five phases, wood, fire, earth, metal, water. And we draw them in a circle like this, that's called the Sheng cycle or generation cycle. Wood generates or engenders or gives birth to fire. Fire generates earth earth generates metal, and so on. And when we look at a consecutive pair along this cycle, we could call this a mother-son relationship. So for example, fire and earth have a mother-son relationship because fire gives birth to earth. Or if we just single out one phase, like earth, we could say that fire is the mother of earth, and metal is the son of earth or the child of earth. So these are just some terms that we use to talk about relationships that occur along the Sheng cycle. When we draw a pentagram in the middle, this gives us the Ke cycle or the controlling cycle or restraining cycle. So each phase controls, restrains, or keeps in check the next phase along the cycle. So for example, wood controls earth, it restrains it or keeps it from becoming too big or too excessive. Now, some people will refer to this as a grandmother relationship. So they say that wood is the grandmother of earth because it's the mother's mother. But personally, I prefer to just call it the controller because that's more descriptive and it's emphasizing the role of controlling or restraining. So if we use the earth phase as our example, along the Sheng cycle, Fire is the mother of earth, and metal is the son of earth. And along the Ke cycle, wood is the controller of earth. The next piece of the puzzle we need is the five shoe transport points, because this will allow us to take these five phase relationships and translate in them into actual points on the body. So in the beginning of points class, we talked about point categories. And one of those categories was the five shoe transport points. Each of the 12 channels has a Jing Well, Ying Spring, Shu Stream, Jing River, and He Si. Now, each of these points has an action that's related to how the Qi is flowing at that particular point on the channel. But besides that, each of the five Qi transport points corresponds to one of the five phases. On the Yin channels, we started with wood, so wood, fire, earth, metal, water. On the yang channels, we start with metal. So metal, water, wood, fire, earth. So now each of the 12 channels has a set of points on it that corresponds to each of the five phases. Hopefully this is all review. But now with these five phase correspondences, we can introduce the concept of a Harari point. It turns out the word Harari is not Chinese. I think it's related to the French word horaire, which means a schedule or a timetable. So this is talking about how the qi flow according to the clock, and ideally these points would be needled at certain times of day or in certain seasons, but that's not important right now. For the purposes of this conversation, we can say that a Harari point is the point on the channel where the five phase correspondence of the point 
matches the five-phase correspondence of the channel on which it lies. That's a really confusing definition. Let's just say it like this. Lung 8 is the Harari point because it's the metal point on a metal channel. Spleen 3 is the Harari point on the spleen channel because it's the earth point on an earth channel. Small intestine 5 is the Harari point because it's the fire point on the fire channel, and so on. The element of the point matches the element of the channel. So this is just giving us some additional terminology to talk about the points on a particular channel. So for example, if we look at the lung channel, lung 8 is the Harari point because it's the metal point on the metal channel. Lung 9 is the mother point because it's an earth point and earth is the mother of metal. Lung 5 is a child point or sun point because lung 5 is a water point and water is the sun of metal. And then lung 10 is the controlling point because lung 10 is a fire point and fire controls metal. And again, some people will call this the grandmother point, but I'm just going to call it a controlling point. So we built up all this terminology to talk about the points in terms of the five phases, but now what we need is the last piece of the puzzle, which is a treatment strategy that we can use to apply all this stuff that we've been talking about. Well, it turns out in four-point needle technique, we actually use two treatment strategies. One that uses our knowledge of the Sheng cycle, or the mother-son relationship, and one that uses our knowledge of the Ke cycle, or the controlling relationship. So the first one goes like this. It comes from chapter 69 of the Nanjing, which says, in cases of deficiency, tonify the mother. In cases of excess, drain the sun. And this should make sense. So let's say we're looking at earth and earth is deficient. So what we can do is tonify the mother, give energy to the fire phase, and that energy will flow downstream into earth and strengthen earth. Now let's say, on the other hand, that Earth is in a state of excess. It has too much energy. What we can do is drain the sun, take energy away from the metal phase, and because the energy flows downstream, that will draw energy away from Earth and sedate it. So that's our first treatment strategy. In cases of deficiency, tonify the mother. In cases of excess, drain the sun. Our second strategy uses our understanding of the controlling cycle. And I actually don't know where this comes from, it's not in the Nanjing, but if we wanted to word it in a similar manner, it would go like this. In cases of deficiency, drain the controller, or sedate the controller. In cases of excess, tonify the controller. And again, this should make sense. Let's say Earth is in a state of excess. It's too big, it's too strong, it's too energetic. What we're going to do to combat that is tonify wood. Because if wood is stronger, it can exert its control on Earth and restrain Earth and bring it back into check. Let's say, on the other hand, that Earth is deficient. Well, here we're going to drain wood or sedate wood so that it can't exert as much control on Earth. Once wood relaxes its control, then that allows Earth to flourish. So that's why we say, in cases of deficiency, drain the controller. In cases of excess, tonify the controller. So those are our two treatment strategies. One uses the Sheng cycle, or the mother-son relationship, and one uses the Ke cycle, or the controlling relationship. So if we combine these two and rearrange them a bit, we would get something like this. In cases of deficiency, we do two things. Tonify the mother and sedate the controller. In cases of excess, we also do two things. Sedate the son and tonify the controller. So again, in each of these situations, we're using both the Sheng cycle and the Ke cycle. And in each situation, something is being tonified and something is being drained. So we have these two treatment strategies, and it turns out for each treatment strategy, we're going to use two points. And that's how we end up with four-point needle technique. To explain that, let's just use some examples. Suppose we have a patient that we diagnose with spleen deficiency. Maybe they have poor appetite, loose stools, weakness in the forelimbs, whatever. We've diagnosed them with spleen deficiency. So if our treatment strategy, we're going to do two things. Tonify the mother and sedate the controller. The spleen belongs to the earth phase, so tonify the mother means tonify fire. Sedate the controller means sedate wood. Here's the thing. 
When we say tonify the mother, we're going to do it in two ways. We're going to tonify the mother point on the spleen channel, and then we're going to tonify the horary point on the mother channel. So to tonify the mother point on the spleen channel, that's the fire point, which is spleen two, then we're going to go to the mother channel. So the mother of earth is fire, and the fire channel is the heart channel. The horary point is the fire point on the fire channel, which is heart eight. So we're going to tonify spleen two, since it's the mother point on the affected channel, then we're going to tonify heart eight, because it's the horary point on the mother channel. For part two, we sedate the controller. And again, this means two things. We're going to sedate the controlling point on the spleen channel, and we're going to sedate the horary point on the controlling channel. So the controlling point on the spleen channel is spleen one, because spleen one is the wood point. Then we go to the controlling channel, which is the wood channel, or the liver channel. And the horary point is liver one, because it's the wood point on the wood channel. So we sedate spleen one, because it's the controlling point on the affected channel, and we sedate liver one, because it's the horary point on the controlling channel. And that gives us our four points. So to deal with spleen deficiency, we tonify spleen two and heart eight, then we sedate spleen one and liver one. Let's do an example of excess. Suppose we have a case of gallbladder excess. The gallbladder channel is a wood channel. Since we're dealing with excess, we're going to do two things. We're going to sedate the sun, which is fire, and tonify the controller, which is metal, because metal chops wood. Now when we say sedate the sun, that means two things. We're going to sedate the sun point on the affected channel, and we're going to sedate the horary point on the sun channel. So the sun point on the gallbladder channel is gallbladder 38, since that's the fire point, and fire is the son of wood. Then we're going to go to the sun channel, which is the small intestine channel, because that's a fire channel. The horary point is SI5, since that's the fire point on the fire channel. So for gallbladder excess, we sedate gallbladder 38 and small intestine five. Next, we're going to tonify the controller, which is metal, and we do this in two ways. We tonify the controlling point on the afflicted channel, and we tonify the horary point on the controlling channel. The controlling point on the gallbladder channel is gallbladder 44, since it's the metal point. The horary point on the controlling channel is large intestine one, since it's the metal point on the metal channel. So for gallbladder excess, we sedate gallbladder 38 and small intestine five, then we tonify gallbladder 44 and large intestine one, and those are our four points. So there are a few things we can point out here. Number one, when dealing with a yin channel, we only use yin points. And when dealing with a yang channel, we only use yang points. That's why with spleen deficiency, we chose the heart channel for our fire channel and not the small intestine because we need to match yin for yin and yang for yang. So if you get a question about four point needle technique, this is something you can look for. If you're dealing with a yin channel and an answer has yang points, cross it out and vice versa. And another thing to point out, whichever channel is afflicted, there will be two points from that channel, and the other two points will be Harari points. So this is another thing you can look for on a test question. If you have an answer that has four different channel points, cross that one out. Or if the other two points aren't Harari points, cross that one out. So I hope that that made sense. It's a little complicated to explain, but if you're still struggling, I made a handout with some flow charts and some examples in a step-by-step -step process. There's a download link below. So take a look at that and maybe watch this video again to really understand it. But my hope is if you actually understand this process and the treatment strategies behind it, you'll be able to recreate this. So rather than memorizing the four points for each channel, excess and deficiency, as long as you know your big picture, you can figure out the points on a test. So that's Korean four point needle technique. Thank you again to everyone who supports this channel. If you're getting value out of these videos and would like to give something back, consider joining the Patreon. There's a link in the description below or making a one-time donation by hitting the super thanks button below. I know that not everyone is in a position to do that. So even just liking this video and sharing it with your friends, classmates, or study group is greatly appreciated. 
We'll see you in the next one.